Today is the Coast Guard's 231st birthday. It's one of the federal government's oldest organizations, older than the Navy, which launched eight years later. The branch was founded by Alexander Hamilton himself back in 1790. And one former member of that team is one of the Weather Channel's favorite people. You know his name. I know his name. He's not my twin brother. It is Kevin Cooper <laughs> Coop. Good day to you, my friend. He joins us live right now from the banks of Lake Tahoe. Kevin, first off, congratulations. Happy birthday to the Coast Guard today. Tell us about your experience as a rescue swimmer with the Coast Guard. Hey, yeah, uh, you know, happy birthday to the Coast Guard. I, I will tell you that it was probably one of the best journeys in my in this in this small time that we have on the planet. My 10 years in the U.S. Coast Guard was absolutely fantastic. I joined in 1982 right after high school, got into the program. And I still remember the day when I was talking to the recruiter and she was asking me what I wanted to do. And I I happened to look up on the wall in San Francisco, right outside Ocean Beach, and I saw a guy sitting in a doorway of a helicopter. And I looked and I said, I want to do that. And she kind of <laughs> giggled at me. It's like, no, 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 that program is just beginning and that will be the elite. Those are going to be rescue swimmers. And I looked at her and I'm like, I'm going to be doing that. And, and when I got in from boot camp through my entire journey, the Coast Guard was unbelievable. Going to Antarctica, I was on the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Polar Star, spent 1986, 85 and 86 in McMurdo Sound, Antarctica, traveled up to Alaska and across the U.S. And jumping out of helicopters, my friends, was probably the best part of my entire 58 years on this planet. Oh, man. Coop, I mean, look, the, the stories that you're able to tell, the opportunities that you had, tremendous. The missions, though, look very intense. So what is it like out there on the water, especially when conditions are not so good? Because that's when you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll definitely tell you, you know, it, it, it's putting it's, it's having trust in your crew, having resilience and the ability, the emotional stability to be able to look down and assess the situation when you're going into the water. And the trust is from the pilot to the co-pilot to that avionics and also out looking out at, your, at the guy that's running the hoist. It's important that you all trust each other. And then you have to have that trust. And you look down, you triage the situation, they deploy you in the water, and you know that you're going to come home safe. Everybody in the water is a survivor. We don't look at them as victims. We look at them as survivors. And your job as a rescue swimmer is to deploy, triage, and get those people back home safely to their friends and their family. It is intense to sit in a doorway of a helicopter during a storm uh, and, and deploy out. One of mine was in 1988 in Santa Cruz after a very large winter storm came through. Uh, I rescued a West German gentleman named Hans German Schlarp who had fallen off the cliffs. He was wiped off the cliffs by a wave and pulled in. The city lifeguards weren't able to get him into our stoke slitter or our basket at the time. So I had to deploy down in 20 to 30 foot seas, get the gentleman back in, get him back into the helicopter and get him over to the paramedics. We're sitting on the bluff right there in Santa Cruz. It's pretty intense, but I tell you what the training puts you in the right place in the right time so you can execute upon that and they've been executing upon that each and every year since 1984. Take me back to 40 years ago we're talking about training here I mean of course you know you can run sprints I'm sure you were in the gym all the time but what was that training truly like not just <laughs> physically but also mentally? <laughs> Well, so there was a game they used to play with us. So my school is in Pensacola, Florida, before they built the beautiful facility they have in Elizabeth City, North Carolina now. And the Navy crew like to call it sharks and daisies. Imagine four <laughs> men in the water. You can't touch the side and you can't touch the bottom. Everybody's yelling and screaming at you. Help me, frog man, help me. Their job was to grab you and put you into a situation where you had to think mentally how to get out. We had escape and a release. And those were the two words that came through your ear. If you didn't execute upon that, you were out of the pool and you rang the bell. That was what was mm. most important of the whole program. You had one shot to do it. We went down with 40, we left with four. It is, wow. uh, it's wow. a pretty intense program, but I, I will tell you, it, it, again, I always, it, it, even in my ski industry career, I think back when challenges come up, I think back to sharks and daisies and what should I do? It's an amazing training program. And anybody out there listening, if you're thinking about a career in the U.S. military, the Coast Guard Aviation Survival Technician Program is absolutely fantastic. Oh, my gosh, Coop. I mean, you're, you're recruiting right here for the Coast Guard. For these yeah, sign stories me up are, right now. But I know, sign us all up. But it's not just about rescues at sea. We have to know real quick what happens with the animals because we, we tease that, that it's not just, you know, taking people to safety. It's also getting animals to safety. 
Absolutely. And the Coast Guard has many different roles from law enforcement to search and rescue, but the environmental side of it is, is part of their fiber as well. So on every one of the ships out there, so there's the there's the ships and then there's the aviation department. The department. Um, and what they have on the ship are marine science technicians. I believe that's still the rate that they have, but those people are out there helping out. They're they're looking after the, the you know orcas and the whales and the sea life, and they're also doing marine protection in the law enforcement side for overfishing. It, it's amazing what they do and the different roles they have to play. When I was in, it was the Department of Transportation. Now they're in Homeland Defense. It's a little bit different now, but they still yeah. each and every day ex execute upon the waters of U.S. Yeah. waters and international waters. Coop, our stoke level is off That's the charts after talking to you. Thank you. Happy birthday to this Coast Guard and thank you for representing.